Okay, this is the uh, name tag activity, and there's actually two sizes. There's a size for a key ring. Um, this year we are going to do the size, it's a little bit larger as a book bag tag. Okay, so in this, uh, there are directions, and you can read and follow along. If you get lost, you know, you're going to want to come and uh, watch the video. Um, so the part needs to be built as a metric part file. So we need to start that as a metric part. And then we see this base shape that's a little bit complicated, but actually it's just a rectangle. Um, and then there's a couple of fillets and chamfers put on that base shape before we complete the extrusion. Okay, so let's see what that looks like to start and build. Okay, in order to get the metric part, I'm going to go up to new and instead of just doing a new standard part or clicking the fast pass button, I need to do a metric part. So see here, I'm going to pick standard millimeters. Okay, and of course, as starting any part file, I get to pick the uh, sketch plane I want to draw on. I want to draw on the XY plane, and then I'm going to select the rectangle button. Notice that the active button becomes blue. Uh, to make sure I get the origin, I'm going to see as my mouse hovers, my mouse is currently yellow. When I hit the origin, it becomes green. So I want to make sure I do grab and, and place that point on the origin. Um, it is 100 millimeters by 50 millimeters. To get to my second number to place my dimension, I'll hit the tab key, 100 by 50, enter. Then I can use my mouse wheel to scroll in and out and pan to place my sketch in the middle of my screen. Escape gets me out of the tool. Um, I want to put a fillet on the ends. So up here, there's the fillet tool, okay, which just adds an arc or a radius. And notice that if I pause, it tells me what to do and shows me a little bit more help. So the program is good at teaching you what to do. That fillet size is 10 millimeters that I want to add to this. You can do a fillet in two ways. You can click the two lines and it will apply the fillet. Or you can, if you very carefully click at the corner, you can get both at the same time. The escape button gets you out of the tool. There's a drop arrow next to fill it. If I hit the drop arrow, that will allow me to use the chamfer tool. And there are three different kinds of chamfers. I want the very basic one, which should be in your default. That's just going to be a 45 degree chamfer, and I want to make that 15 millimeters. Now with this one, um, again, works the same way. You can hit the corner, or you can hit the two lines. So that gives me my base shape. Uh, let's go back and look at the directions again. Of course, next thing I'm going to do is extrude that to a depth of three millimeters. And that's one of the critical things in this. Uh, in order to do the extrusion, I'm gonna finish sketch and extrude. The default distance is 10 millimeters. I need to make it three millimeters. If you don't extrude your, don't build your part the right size, we cannot print it in, th in uh, two different colors because we're, we're gonna print these all at the same time. Okay, next, I'm going to put a new sketch and drill a hole. Okay, so I'm just going to right away select new sketch and then I can, instead of selecting a work plane uh, from the origin, I can select a face on the part I've already got. So that puts a new sketch on there. And then I'll use the point tool to just eyeball where my hole is going to be. And this time, I'm going to use the dimension tool, and I'm going to place that point 
10 millimeters from the left side and 25 millimeters from the bottom side. Okay, I'll finish the sketch. And there is a hole tool. Uh, we always want to drill intelligent holes and not just extrude circles. So that hole needs to be 10 millimeters and should go through all. Okay, um, some of these feature tools can also be used at the feature level as well as the sketch level. And that's what I want to do now. I have a, I'm going to, I'm going to apply a fillet, but I want to round off four little corners to make this a little bit smoother. I want to make them um, four millimeters and I can select multiple ones. So I'm going to change that to four millimeters and just where I put those chamfers, those little edges that are kind of small, then I can take my view cube and slowly rotate it to see that bottom corner. So I have now four corners selected where I will uh, apply a four millimeter fillet just to slightly ease those edges. Okay, and I can close that tool. Um, next, if we go look at the directions again, okay, I just did the fillet. Um, I want to create a border around the outside. Okay, so in order to do that, I'm going to use a couple new tools. I'm going to put a new sketch on the face, project the geometry, and offset that geometry three millimeters. Okay, so we've got a new sketch. Then we have the proje project geometry. Project geometry is a big button. Big buttons are important. So there's project geometry. I just click at the face, and now you'll notice I get a border outline around the entire object. Then I'm going to select the offset tool. I'm going to move in three millimeters move in and then type the number three, hit enter, and you'll see now I have a three millimeter border around the outside. I'll finish the sketch, extrude a distance of 1.2 millimeters. And this time, since there's more than one feature, we gotta make sure that we select, and if I hover, it'll highlight in red, the, the the feature and the profile that I want to that I want to uh, extrude. So you have to have an enclosed profile. Very easy with that offset tool. Um, likewise, okay. The other thing that we want to do is uh, chamfer those edges. Um, very similar to that, we can do that at the feature level. Um, we do not want to chamfer the bottom because. Um, small parts like this can curl. Uh, we want that base plate to stick really good um, as it's printing to the, the print bed. So over here right next to fill it is chamfer. And the chamfer I can do on this is a one millimeter chamfer. And if I select that outside edge, it grabs the entire profile. Let's see, it, gets, it does get the inside edge also. So there I have the entire profile selected at one millimeter. Okay, so that kind of eases the edges on at least one face of that. Um, next, okay, we're going to add text to the face. Um, the text should be bold if possible and uh, not all small texts or fonts are going to extrude very well. So, you know, and, and we want to be at least seven millimeters or larger. Um, the bigger the text is, the better it's going to look. Um, and then it'll identify that, hey, that's my book back. So again, on that sketch face, I'm going to create uh, a new sketch. There is a text option. Um, the text box works like a text box in Microsoft. So you click and drag to kind of eyeball a text box. So see now I, I've clicked and dragged to create a text box and then it opens up a dialogue window. So now I have to decide what I'm going to do. Uh, in this example, I'm just going to type my name. 
Okay, now I said you want to be at least seven millimeter aerial bold or larger. So I'm going to go find aerial and make it bold. And, and notice I have to highlight my text in order for it to change size. So I'm going to go seven millimeters. Um, the other thing that I'm going to change is I'm going to center justify both horizontally and vertically. So look at my uh, setup window. I've highlighted things. Now that font might be a little bit small, but that's going to be my starting point. And if you have a long name or something, you might want to do just a last name or just first name or just initials. Oops, I forgot. I uh, hit hit the wrong button there. I'll have to do that again. Okay, so again, type your name. You're going to highlight it, change the size, and make it center justified, and that'll center your name up. Um, one of those justifications didn't didn't hold, so if you double click the text, that'll move it over to the middle. So I have center justified horizontally and vertically. Okay, so obviously you can tell I can make that text a little bit bigger. Um, and to put make this very simple, um, I could use up here, we have dimension constraints. So I could use a dimension constraint to dimension from that text box to that top edge and make that say uh, two millimeters. So this way as I'm resizing my text, I can keep this box centered. If I go two millimeters from the top, the right side, and the bottom, and then on the left side, I'm gonna use a geometric constraint. I'm gonna make that left side box tangent to my hole. So that kind of centers up my name. Um, I can go back and make my font big, go big or go home. Let's see what 12 looks like and make it bold and that looks pretty good okay again extrude a distance of 1.2 and we want to make sure we extrude that up and then our name tag is pretty much finished of course make sure we save this book bag tag my initials um, in your practice folder. I'm gonna put my, my name tag with my bathroom pass folder, which is fine. Okay, um, one last step in order to 3D print. In order to 3D print, I need to go to File, Export, CAD Format, and then when I get there, I need to change to STL, uh, STL file and under the options menu oh, let me cancel out of that a second slide this sideways under the options tab there I need to make sure that this is high resolution and it needs to be millimeters when you very first start inventor on a, on a program uh, on a computer it will not be millimeters it'll be centimeters and then your part's going to come out too small. And it, it will also be BREP, which stands for boundary representation. We need high resolution. Uh, so go ahead and say OK. Uh, save that file. And now I have a, uh, um, I will have a file that is an STL file that can be uploaded to the Google Share Drive. Okay, so that's the book bag tech.